Right, so in the last few tutorials we developed the kite turbine rings up here and the transmission rings, they ended up looking a bit like these parts over here. And we had the lines going up to the kite turbine and uh, yeah, this stuff down here was the ground station. We don't need that just now. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of a, a whole lot of this just now to make this next section more efficient because I've been clogging my old, very old <laughs> laptop down with uh, all the data that's going on here. Um, let's do that. Let's make a bit of geometry. Uh, normally, it, you know, you'd want to be able to play with, I'm gonna internalize that. Um, if I turn off a lot of the stuff up here, in fact, I'm gonna take the only point, we're, we're, the only part we're going to be looking at now is this stuff down here. So what this is, is analysis of the, the rings uh, and the areas that they're casting. So the, um, if we look at the wind is going this direction, okay, coming from left to right on, from you know, above or from the front view here. So it's going to be sort of hitting a wall at this end, you could say. And the way I did the analysis was drop down three points from this line onto the YZ plane. So that's, um, if you imagine that's here, moving in this direction, that plane, anything in, in that line. So I had three, three points defining the, the YZ plane there. And we, uh, in this view, we you know, sort of cast these shapes onto, you know, the, it'll be exactly the same as the shapes that we're seeing here. And I was going to be looking at the areas that these cast and depending on um, how these go up or down, we would be casting that shape onto that, um, onto the front there, uh, you know, from, from this view, we'll be casting that shape onto the plane that's behind these shapes. So yeah, here we are looking at the, the YZ view from you know, yeah, this right hand side view. So because this computer is a bit old, I'm going to cheat a little bit to save on um, compute expense there. What I've done is I've just, uh, I'll turn those off and in fact I'll come to disable that actually I'll, I'll disable a whole lot of stuff um, I've still got the the shapes here they are here that's good I can turn off the I don't, we don't need the these guides up there anymore um, I'll get rid of that preview um, yes later on you know when it comes to analyzing the yeah, the changing in the variables and stuff. Yeah, we we, we want to turn all this section, all everything else back on. But uh, I think I'm only going to be concerned with uh, the analysis bits just now. I'm going to turn these. These are the points that um, I use to make the, the planes. They come off of the back line. And these points, if I preview them here, are points on there. Um, I'm, I might bake these points just now this is maybe the way to do it um, or I'll, I'll write some in a wee second hold on what I'll do is I'll get some points I'll control C E E I'll take these values and internalize them internalize internalize and internalize right I'll take these down here there they go into this this was coming from where they were earlier you can see that and I'll, I'll pull those in in a wee second what I'll do before this though yeah the only two inputs to this are the wing geometries and those three points what we get from the wing geometries is projecting them onto a plane and the plane is going to be defined by these three points these three points are in strange places at the moment and the only reason I'm doing this like I said it was computers running a bit slow so let's see how this works let's disable all that um, I'm gonna take this down a bit um, I won't select that one ah, we've got that box there that's okay pull that box back where it was not back where it was there's one up here there and that went okay right
right and everything above we're just going to disable all that as well so at the moment we don't need any of that stuff up there it's all gone a bit orange and dead there hasn't it right so let's see what do we need oh this we need to re-enable that one yep that's still there we're going to pull that geometry into here and we're going to pull these I'll shift and click to add that you see the little arrow has got oh come on yeah we want oh it seems to have gone a bit wonky again hopefully the recording's still working but uh, must be something to do with my logic here well, let's have a look at that Is this going to resolve? Well, I'll pause while we wait. Well, I think my finally my computer's finally woken up again. Um, I've moved these points so that they're a wee bit more in line. Um, seems to be another one there. I don't, I don't know what that's about. A bit odd. Um, yeah, don't know what the missing one there is. Um, can't see that referenced anywhere. Okay, a bit odd. I'll not worry just now. And those we've made some planes. And let's have a look at our panel. Where have I done that bit? Um, we have plane one, two, three. Yeah, and these are geometries. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, so there's yeah, f uh, five geometries. That's the five blades. Close reps, a boundary representation. Um, and those boundary representations, for each one of those, we're casting it onto. Uh, plane that's got the origin and the z direction and so the geometries each one of those five go onto a plane and coming out of that we have five closed reps on uh, three different planes now this component here works out the area of that cast um, so these these are the cast we're looking like shining light from left here to right and seeing the, you know that one here so we're, you know this is like we're looking with the wind here straight forward so we can't see what's being cast on there um, you know from the top view winds coming from that way and it's casting on to here uh, we could move these spots a little bit there that one let's move that one a little bit that way so see okay you can see that shifting underneath it it's yeah so these are the cast shapes here which come out of this part yeah clear out there roughly yeah it would have to go far in the distance to get it as, as flat as this view this is the perspective view okay um now here we work out the area i'll uh, probably have to turn this on and pause the video because this one seems to take a while to compute so I'll wait a wee second. Okay, I'm really not sure why this area component is taking so long to compute that. Uh, that seems enormous. Uh, anyway, let's shift on. Um, now I'll enable some of these parts here. Um, enable, and we'll have a look at what we're doing. So from those areas that come out, we have um, a range of, of areas you know for oh, for each um, computed area centimeter squared so I take the I find the bounds of that set so from this one uh, that's in zero. Oh, we've done the, the full bounds um, so I flattened all of that data inside when you flatten now I'll show you what that means uh, I'll flatten it here oh that might take a wee while let's just pause again Okay, that's the um, the data flattened there, so it's all one list. So we take that into the bounds and we set a, a domain. Well, we deconstruct the domain. We find out what the, the lowest and the highest values are. And this area is just to set those levels to color. Use the parameter of the lowest and highest, the, the lowest and highest uh, areas to color and shade the geometry that comes out 
Okay, I'm going to cheat a little bit for this exercise because using the actual areas was a little bit slow. Um, this component here, Brep Edges, has taken what was um, cast onto the area and it divides that up into its uh, naked edges, interior edges, and non manifold edges, basically the, yeah, the, the lines that make up the the boundary representation not sure why this area calculation was being quite so slow maybe i can simplify the curve hold on a wee second well this uh, method of taking the interior curves and feeding them into the you know making sure they're closed curves does give us area calculations quicker and we can uh, change the, the, the sort of we're looking at those shadows that they're basically casting in the wind direction and, and saying okay we've got a red green blue scale of uh, for those shapes that come through you know what what is their size um relative that's only gives us so much useful information we're much more likely to you know use those area oh, i'll take this out of flatten um yeah much more likely to use the actual area data that is that is cast um i think it may be the centroid working out that centroid which is slowing it down but um to go back to being curve data i'm going to put the geometry back in and suffer the suffer the slow wow that was painfully slow right i'll get rid of these uh this approximation curve whereas it did speed up that calculation it uh yeah it may not be so useful the rest of this here what i was doing was making a curve here and that curve as well as this curve they depicted the outside and inside um, of that sort of swept area they they're a bit of a simplified view to be honest they just take a, a, a degree three um, and the, yeah periodic to close the curve there yeah a degree three curve edge um, not style spacing yeah so i'm interpolating the end points of the edges the inside edges that i'd been using earlier on to calculate the the boundary shapes of that now between those what i do is i create a surface um, a ruled surface between those two shapes because they're on a plane a, a ruled surface should be fine um, you can see the area of that one red small these green medium blue fairly large um, in this analysis of those shapes here oh uh, that's disabled that's why it's not turning on sorry about that we're waiting about for nothing um enabled ah there we go right okay so we can see that's the cast swept area and you can see here how these swept areas are overlapping so we're wanting to uh, calculate that now so what have I done here so the way I went about this was really rather simple once we'd got these curved shapes I chose the first one um, yeah, hold on. I then chose a point on the the tops of these uh, roughly on the tops here by from this curve the outer curve I moved this slider until it was roughly at the top on all of them. I only took the second two, I think, and made these planes from a surface plane from a shape. Let's have a look at what that is. Um, yeah, and used these as cutting planes on to split those shapes there. Um, yeah, to split these surfaces, the second two of these. Yeah, so the first one went up here, the second two came down here. So from back here, you can see when this list was split, those surfaces, we had one untrimmed surface, two untrimmed surfaces, and those untrimmed surfaces, we found a spot on them to make a plane. Um, sorry, we yeah split the upper ones into two trimmed surfaces. Here we're splitting the list. There's only going to be one trimmed surface per list come out here. We'll 
flatten all that down there'll be uh, one untrimmed that would be the front one and two trim surfaces so the areas um, presented effective frontal swept area that's basically the whole of the lower one and I'm saying this is the second one is cut off from that line anything above that line is useless and I'm saying uh, sorry anything below that line is isn't seeing wind anything above is so that's a bit of a cheat I could have probably joined I could have found a way of the intersect of these curves or the intersect of those surfaces um, you see how slow I am with dealing with areas here though so yeah there's probably a better way to do this um, but this was just a, a rather rapid way oh, I should enable all that first um, yeah so I'm adding up that that will be the total of all of these areas and then is that percentages what am I doing here yeah this is this is for the overall this is them all added together and this is just taking it into meter squared um, and so we have and this is rounding the decimal down okay um, yeah meter squared it's concatenating the text and I put that somewhere out here, so it'll be red. Yeah, effective frontal area. So that's um, that should actually, as I do that, change. Oh, I can just turn this off. Okay. Um, there was a point. That's the point out there, where that text will be set. So that's the whole area of the whole the, the frontal area. Uh, let's turn off those planes just now. A bit distracting. Um, the other analysis I did was this one total frontal swept area. That I guess that's just everything that's coming out the front. Yeah, there we are, all added together. Effective frontal swept area. And let's have a look at these other ones. That was just some text, it's kind of irrelevant, really. Um, this one. Yeah, this one doesn't seem to make much sense actually. I'm going to ignore that just now. Right, so, and there are, you know, some pretty easy ways we could um, look at the, the full circle analysis uh, on there, or we could, you know, the, the full ground swept area. I suppose that's what that, uh, you know, if we had the XY plane, the world XY plane, we could look at what's being swept there. Um, yeah, turning everything back on. You know, enabling all this again and uh, messing about with the the sizes. Um, I'm not sure why this is being so slow today. This this area calculation that's sh shocking. That won't help in recalculating and playing about. Um, yeah, I must find a way to to speed that up because that that's really not helping. The the area calculation there. Yeah, it's not great. I guess we could project them all onto a single plane and find the intersections of the shapes. There's plenty of um, intersection uh, up in, you know, physical intersection, bounds and, and curves and such up there. Uh, yeah, in, yeah, shape intersections and such here. We can, we can do a lot of, a lot of investigation there. Um, otherwise, I hope that's been a uh, helpful guide to to what the the structure of this this document was and and roughly how it's it's been gone about and how it's worked. I'm sure, given um, other studies, we, yeah, we, there, there's there's inspiration for you within Grasshopper. The, the, the tool set is way broader than I've shown here. It's it's a very capable uh, interface. There, there's yeah, there's so much can be done with the. the extensions and the, the plugins in Grasshopper it's uh, very capable but it might be that any of your own investigations you you work on in say MATLAB, Aerodyne or, or otherwise um, yeah hope that helps